Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and thousand pound best friends. Because ever since I've been watching my 600 pound life with you guys, you guys have told me this show probably more than any other, besides thousand pound sisters. And as a former thou well not thousand, but 600 pounder, I think I've got a little insight. And the first thing I'm noticing off the bat is how the hell are your legs that skinny off rip? Like you're lifting a lot of weight, they should be way more muscular. My surgeon still says my calves are big and I think they're tiny. But anyways, let's check this one out and see what these ladies got going on. Previously on 1,000 pound best friends. Oh my God. Me and this girl have been struggling with our weight since junior high. That's the dilemma of being fat. You never find anything cutesy pootsy. I just never seen them that big before. Mm. That big before, what? Lady, you're not much smaller. That's mean to say to your friend. And also cutesy pootsy? Okay. Food has always been a very good companion for me. Is this eating healthy? Yes. Mom, what, you gotta walk around and be a grouchy bitch all day long because you don't get to eat no more? It's always been hard to me to do a diet because I do have my sister that likes to sabotage. So how's the weight loss? Her sister sets her up like that? That's not fair. I mean, if you're big, you like food, and your sister's bringing Krispy Kreme to the party all the time, you're, I mean, you have to want it for yourself, but you're bound to mess up here and there. Stuff going, Megan. I'm way better than where I was, sure. but I'm not where I want to be. Since my surgery, I have lost over 150 pounds, but okay. I've been slacking a little bit. How would you feel about going with me to go see Dr. Proctor? I don't want Jacob to feel like it's okay to be this big. You've lost no weight whatsoever. You get one shot out of this. You can go right back to where you were before. It's Isn't he the same doctor from Thousand Pound Sisters? And also, yeah, you better take the golden opportunity because I'm still working on it. I'm almost two years out and I feel like complacency is going to be my biggest enemy. So I'm still working. I won't consider it a success until I see that number that I shot for at the start. Here's me because I don't ever want to go back to where I was. It's easier than you'd think. Girl, I had all kind of emotions back there. <clears throat> Aww. He called me out. Dr. Proctor has just informed me that if I don't step up my game, I could gain all my pre-surgery weight back. So you lost 150. My surgeon straight up told me like, hey, Sean, you could lose 100 pounds eating just ice cream because your stomach's that small. He's like, but you're going to put it all straight back. So she's lost 150. She's still not small by any means. But yeah, she's definitely screwing up if that's the case. Oh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to not ever go back there again. I knew I was going to be in trouble. Aww. Megan comes out, she is beside herself. I feel bad, I do, I feel bad for her, but that just makes me 10 times more nervous that he's gonna flat out tell me to leave his office. <laughs> Bro, I wore yellow one time, and it was just because I had to play the sun for this damn play, man. I was in, what is it, show choir. I was dancing around in a red sequin vest on stage. If you wanna know where confidence comes from, Doing that in front of your high school peers and not giving a damn will help you big time. Hello. Vanessa, hello. How are you? I brought my son. And singing this the sun Jacob. will come out Jacob. tomorrow. Jacob, oldest boy. I'm Dr. Proctor. I'm Jacob. Nice to meet you. Why don't you guys have a seat? Come on. It's been a little while, huh? Yes. Well, Vanessa, it's it's good to see you again. Um, I didn't know that I would see you again. What, what brings you in today? I am... Start, I have started a diet and am wanting to lose the weight and want to know if you would even be interested in still being my doctor. Not about you proving anything to me. It's about you proving it to yourself. Yeah. So it's been six months. Let's see where you are now. When I first... I mean, it's kind of about proving to him that you're on, like, the same, same page as he is, so he'll do the surgery, but also, like... This doctor here is pretty lenient compared to Dr. Now. Dr. Now will slap you with the fat Bible and be like, you ain't getting no surgery. 
saw Dr. Proctor. My weight was 446 pounds. Last time I seen him, I was only 427. Lightweight. 427. <laughs> You're down 20 pounds. Congratulations. He gave me the goal to get under 400 pounds, but I've spent most of the time since ignoring my diet. So getting up on the scale today, I'm nervous. 448. I have f***ed up so much. Four forty one point six. Over four hundred and forty pounds is a massive blow to the head. I made progress doing good and then I just threw it all away. Hey, calm down, lady. It took me like nine months to get to that point. So you are not as bad off as some of us were. You could turn that around no problem if you want it. I wanted you down below four hundred. So you're nowhere near being ready for surgery. Got to a point where I gave up. I don't care. I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about him. I didn't care about anybody. I was ready to give it all up. Blow up and be as big as I want. But then I started realizing my grandfather died at 51. My mother died at 51. I'm already 42, fixing to be 43 years old. Damn, that's nine years. You better get your ass in gear. Also, I'd like to know what her son weighs, because he's not a little boy by any means. That kid might be related to me in a past life or something. That only gives me seven years. If that, Vanessa. If that. If you don't figure out a way to do this, you're not going to be around a whole lot longer. I know. The risks of remaining obese and getting larger and having your health deteriorate, you know, first comes immobility, bed sores, you know, problems with their respiration and so forth. Vanessa's early mortality rate, or her chances of dying before becoming an old lady, about 80%. I've turned over new, and I'm starting to think different for the simple fact I've seen his health go down. I see him struggle, and it makes me realize it's because of me. He's done. It's because of what you taught him, but also, side note, the way her fat is distributed it's kind of weird, like, since I've been losing, like, my love handles are my problem area. And when I was in Florida, I realized I could use them suckers as a flotation raft. So I just want to see what happens to her in the water. I was diagnosed pre-diabetic about three, four years ago, and I didn't ever really check up on it. So we need to get that looked into, right? Because it's in your family. <laughs> Diabetes can wreak havoc on the rest of your body, and it's what cuts your life short. But let's weigh you in and see where we're starting from. All right. Oh, he's way bigger than I thought. I'm telling you guys, I'm fat blind. Like, I cannot tell. I just got big enough that I'm like, yeah, you're kind of big. You got to be like 500 plus for me to say, okay, you're getting fat. But that's it. 466. All right, have a seat. Vanessa, you look upset. That's scary. <laughs> I mean, 441 is bad. What I weigh is bad, but I'm a 40-year-old woman. But to be almost 500 pounds at 18 years old, baby, that's bad. I knew already I was, like, a little overweight. I didn't know I was that much overweight. It was me being lazy that really pushed me back and, and put me in this hole. That's why I came to see him, is to try and find a way through this. You see now with, with the numbers up there where this is going? Yeah, but the fact that he's 18, his body would respond way better to, like, just dieting and exercise. He could melt that weight like it's nothing. If if he locked in, he could be out here friggin' just maybe, like, 250 before, like, a year and a half or so. He could kill it. Yeah. We're trying to ward off a lifetime of misery, okay? We're trying to head that off right now. You're young. You can make some massive changes. You can erase all this before it ever happens. So Jacob just weighed in at 466 pounds. At his young age, this is a terrible trajectory for him to be on. This doesn't tend to get better. This tends to get worse. I want you guys to be around a long time for each other, all right? And I want you to start motivating each other through this, okay? Vanessa, your goal remains the same. 
I want to see you drop below 400 pounds. We don't even hint about going to the operating room unless you're going to show me that you're going to do your part yeah. on this. Yeah, I ain't even going to ask you to do surgery until I can show you. I'm going to set you up with our dietitian and our therapist. And if you do the work with them, you should be able to reach your goal. Sounds good. Thank you so much, daughter. Seeing Jacob's weight has motivated me more than anything. All these other pastimes with Dr. Proctor, I never took it seriously. Now Is it just me or does her face makeup look whack, like crazy, like Ronald McDonald style caked on? Now it's my child. My child lives by what I live by. If I start eating better, I start losing weight, I go on a big diet, he'll do it with me. Mama's stepping up now. That's right. Tell him, Mama. We're going to the pool. It's so hot. Even if I can't walk, I think I'm just going to... Oh, shit. They multiplied. How'd that happen? Roll to the water. Going to see Dr. Proctor was devastating and embarrassing, and we're not doing so hot. We need to do better, especially if we want to meet our weight loss goal. So we're headed to the public pool with the girls to do some exercising, and we're going to get to work. That's right. How did that visit go? OK, I know I'm fat. I know I'm big. But the biggest wake-up call was the fact that Jacob weighs more than me. Yeah, that, um, that, that's hard. My life has to change in order for his life to change. I'm so, so glad you said that. Very, very happy to hear that. I mean, at 18, like, he's probably just locked in. Like, the only thing he's probably thinking about is women, women, women get on another website, women, women, women. Like, that's how you think as a young man. But the parents here should have taught him better habits. Just like my mom kind of let me do whatever I wanted, which is a recipe for disaster when you're young, so. The words of Dr. Proctor kind of screwed the shit out of me because he told me I only got so many, like, peak time to lose this weight and I'm falling behind. And I am scared to death because I can gain it all back. You are living proof that it can happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly can, you know, relate to what you're going through. Oh, you huzzy. I can definitely relate to Megan's um, issues and how I felt with the first surgery. I lost roughly about 60, 65 pounds and then kind of plateaued. And then I eventually gained all of that back. Why'd you only lose 60, 65 pounds? You could have done that without surgery, like easy. That's nothing. If you did that, that means you didn't follow any diet or even try a little damn bit. Plus some. The best thing she could do is cut the calories and be a little bit more active. I feel like if I had done those things, I had I would have definitely been successful um, with, with my procedure. Oh, oh my God, is this happening, guys? Y'all, let's do this. Together, we can do anything. Absolutely. Like, we ain't got no problem. All right. I don't know how I feel about those kind of pools because they're like more pee than water almost. All them kids in there just go and play in super soaker in the pool. It's crazy. Also, there might be some other bodily fluids in there if they're like getting their extra aerobic cardio in the water. You know what I mean? so many people you know it's not too late to turn around Come on. the pool can actually be a great place to exercise for large people because you don't feel it so hard on your joints even True. though there's a lot of walking lots of stairs and a bunch of eyes on us we're not gonna let that deter us all eyes on me <laughs> you sure you don't want to turn around hell no Bro, that's the worst, because kids are brutally honest. They're looking at you, because I was giving blood, and this little boy looked at me, and it's like, he's talking to his mom. He's like, Mom, look at the fat man. I died laughing. She died inside. She's like, oh, my God. She started to panic, but me, I'm just laughing. I didn't give a damn. When I'm with the girls, I feel way more empowered. Yeah, you feel the stares, but it doesn't matter, because... When we're together, we're a force to be reckoned with. There's nothing you can say that's going to hurt our feelings. They're going to think what they're going to think, and we're going to come in large and in charge. I love it. Yeah. Large and in charge. <laughs> <laughs> the buffet destruction force. <laughs> All right, let's just do, make sure that one's on each side before we sit down. Yeah. Even the weight out. Ooh, that's going to tilt. Ah. 
There we go. Is it stable? It I is. Like these are actually oh, you're see, 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 that's why I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> That's one of those big girl things. We have to be mindful of weight distribution so that there isn't an incident where either we mess up the, the table and or embarrass ourselves. I've definitely popped a wheelie on one of them tables before. It's pretty embarrassing, but it's also funny as hell. So just do it for fun. And uh, that's something that I feel skinny people or small people don't, you know, have to think about or don't really understand. Are y'all ready to conquer this slide? Hell no to the green one. Oh, I'm not you're getting stuck. stuck in there and having the jaws of life get me out. I think you, fat, oh you have to think about stuff like that, getting stuck in stalls, showers, tubes, getting stuck in the dryer or washer. Oof. What? Wait a minute, how you get in? Huh? So I knew she was going there, but stuck in a water slide definitely sounds like one of those titles on that other website. It's hanging inside the dryer. And you're not allowed to do Don't. laundry at home alone ever. <laughs> you're not supposed to do it alone. Do they got an elevator? It's gonna take me two hours to get up the stairs. I'm slow as hell. I'm already hurting. We got this. We got this, ladies. A walk up this water slide will definitely take our exercise to the whole next level. Woo! Oh, look at her those steps. I know my body. If I got to go up that many stairs, I got to rock it out. Well, every step I... It's funny to hear her say that, but you really do try to do any physical activity as fast as you can so you can rest again sooner. It's sad, but those stairs... That's a lot. When you're like 400, 600, whatever, those stairs suck. Each and every one hurts your knees, ankles, all that. I take, I'm looking at my feet like, come on, bitch. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Let's just take one more step, one more step, one more step. You got this, babe, right behind you. Oh, God. You're good, babe. Excuse me, ma'am. There's a weight limit for the slide. What's the weight limit? 350. 350? Because I weigh 441. I, I won't tell if you don't tell, but I can ride the damn slide finally, guys. Damn. I ain't been to a water park in forever. I need to go to a water park, man. Can't ride it. I'm out. Sorry about that. You know what? This is Aww. just a hump in the road. Uh, this is the most embarrassing thing in the world to go back. Look, we're gonna we come will back. come back another time, and we will conquer this with you. It's just you know motivation, else? babe. I can't believe it. I finally got my ass in gear, and I started dieting again. Walked up all these stairs, and I can't even get on a water ride because of my weight. I mean, it's cardio, though. You got some exercise. The most embarrassing thing that happened to me happened when I was, like, 16. I was at Six Flags with, like, a whole group of friends. We tried to get on a roller coaster, and I couldn't get the, like, thing to buckle around me. I was too wide. Man, that just killed me inside to have to walk back down that line, so I know what she's feeling. I feel like a complete failure. Oh, God. Why did I even come today? Why did I put myself out here? Oh, God. Is that her oh stomach or poopa? That's horrible. That's the most embarrassing thing in the world. Oh. I mean, to be fair, acting like that makes it more embarrassing because they're just going to look more and think, what the hell is wrong with this lady? Did she get stuck up there? And they're going to think all kinds of crazy things like your friend just did about the dryer. I keep suggesting that she get her own place. Could you at least give that some consideration? Moving out is baseline. extremely scary, extremely hard. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to turn my world upside down. That's the most embarrassing thing in the world. After the exhausting climb up those stairs to the water slide, Vanessa gets shot down and told she's too big. I'll just sit here. Sweetie, why are you talking about her like that? You're one Big Mac away from not able to ride that sucker either. Also, why can't she go down the white one that's open on top? There shouldn't be a weight limit on that, right? 
breaking for Vanessa right now, but yeah. she conquered the no, steps I'm like proud a bitch. Of her. That's huge. She needs That's huge. Let's get down there so we can spend some time with her. This is a major accomplishment for me. I'm I'm up here and I'm about to just do something I ain't done since I was a kid. We come to you today to make sure that my hair doesn't get wet and that we don't die. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm here. You got me, bud. Oh, oh shit. That's a lot of momentum, buddy. She almost shot off the side of that sucker, went into orbit. Oh, I want to do that. Going down that slide, I didn't realize how weak my back was because as I was going down, I got thrown back and I couldn't sit up, but I felt like I was living for the first time in a long time. That's good. Hey. I was terrified because I was going all over that slide. So by the time I hit the water, I was thankful to God that I had made it. Long soldier. <laughs> all right. I'd be the one idiot that flew off the side of that sucker trying to do something stupid. I just know it. Like, I'm always trying to do things the extra dumb way. You're about to go drown. Oh, my God. There are so many mixed emotions that I'm going through. Car racing. Here goes nothing. Is she going slower because she has more butt than the rest of them and it's like more resistance factor? That's the only thing I can figure. Why did I do this? You knew you were coming to the water park. Why did I change my hair? Good. So many emotions. Thank you, God, that I did not drown. My thighs are shaking and not in a good way. My heart's still pounding. <laughs> Wait, is that, is that a wig? Because I know those wigs get expensive. Or is that her actual hair? I'm a guy. I'm not being mean about that. I'm just stupid. I don't know if that's her real hair or not. Is that why she said she... No, she said she should have changed it, right? In a good way. I don't know. I just feel like that's another letdown, another blow to my... But it's not. Ego. It is. But did you see those stairs? And did you see how you got on them and, and went up? And you walked back down them. I had to. I had no choice. But you need to let it motivate you. These need to be goals, not setbacks. I'm trying, I'm trying. Like, that's just, that's one more thing that with me about my diet. I mean, mentally, you'll beat yourself up over little things like that for a very long time. But once you start, like, just taking the small victories, like, say, you buy a pair of pants that's a size too small, and then you can fit in it in, like, a month or something like that, you just got to look at little things like that and let them build you up. So you just keep building and building and building and eventually you get where you want to go. At least that's how I look at it. There are so many things working against me now. You know, I got Jackie constantly telling us that it's okay. It's okay. Just eat this. Oh, you can start your diet tomorrow. Well, it's okay. She don't care that I'm big. You know, my sisters always love me, which sisters do, you know. But support me in my endeavor, don't push me down. Come on, I mean, she's full hard sabotage. The other day, she ordered, and it was like 20 burgers, 20 chicken sandwiches. Do you think that maybe she won't? Who the hell needs that many burgers? Sounds like you need to slap Jackie with a flapjack, man. No, I hate to say he wants to keep you big, but she's afraid of you having um, a life outside of her. Like, if you got healthy, maybe you wouldn't need her as Yeah, well. I wonder about that. I wonder and about that a lot. She's afraid that if you I do take well, care of everybody in the house. You've got to do what's best for you and your kids. It's always been Jackie and Vanessa. They've had a hard life together, so I think Jackie thinks in her head, if Vanessa don't need me, where will I be? And we all... Okay, so Jackie's scared to lose her sister. I think I've seen a clip of this before where they live together, but that's full psychopath to not want your sister to better herself and just have a healthier lifestyle. You see how hard this is on her. Just stares basically knocked her out. 
and I probably wouldn't even made it to the top of those steps without needing to pause. No, Vanessa can be both, but when it comes to family, you need to like stop by. I know, but I can't, yeah. I really worry about Vanessa because currently where she's living at is a very toxic situation. And if it continues, we may not have Vanessa for long. I'm a klutz, I swear. <laughs> One time, this fingernail still doesn't grow back right because I was with my girlfriend and I was checking out the girl walking down the street and I got karma like a mother. I shut my finger in the door and the whole fingernail came off like a week later. Me and Megan know that we've got to make some big changes. And after my big failure at the water park, that really gave me a big wake-up call. So the next logical step for us to do would be to get in touch with Dr. Proctor's nutritionalist so that we can meet up and find out, like, exactly what are we doing wrong, what are we picking wrong, are we doing anything right? Hi. Hi. Guys, it's so good to see you. It's been so yeah, long, it right? Has. I've worked with Megan and Vanessa last year, and I am so excited to talk with them and help them learn how to pick out food so that they can have a sustainable plan going forward. Kind of just let last year get by me, but now I'm wanting to be serious. I'm wanting to do the right thing, and I just have bad cravings for my fried foods, my fat foods, oh, chocolate. Hey, you just have to learn how to control that demon. That's oh, right. Gosh. Yeah. So um, today... Yeah, the fried finger food demon. But also, I, I can't get over her makeup. She's caking it on and it looks so much whiter than her arms. Aren't you guys supposed to match that? I don't know, maybe she could contact Jeffree Star or something. I'd love for you to shop for like a normal like Sunday night family dinner. All right, Perfect. let's All do right. this I'll thing. See you guys on the I, other I'll side. see you on the other side. Thank Perfect. you. Oh boy. Be careful. Oh, okay. Who's it got guests? Oh, you gonna fart on me? I would not want to. Yeah, right. For individuals that are at higher oh, weights, no. such as Megan and Vanessa, it's super important to figure out the foods that you love and feel like you can't live without and find a good alternative. So I hope that today I could kind of assess their blind spots, their guilty pleasures, and I'll meet up with them afterwards to check in and see how they did. Also, if this chick backfires on her way up the stairs after all the fried food she's talking about, you're catching pink eye. There's just no way around it. I like this with rice. Well, see, but I am. Big country ham fan. So what should we cook for our sample Sunday dinner? I mean, we gotta be healthy, right? Oh God, what about kind of a brupper is what we call it, a breakfast for supper. Country ham, eggs, Ruffer. little cheese crisps, and then put your whole egg on top. And then when you cut everything, it all runs with your cheese. You have ham and cheese eggs with a little crisp because of the cheese crisp. Girl. All that salt and stuff in it is not good for you. Okay. Right? That sounds like a quadruple bypass, like all mixed together. Also, brupper sounds like a dirty word. I don't know why. Oh, stuffed olives? I gotta grab some of these. I love cream cheese and I love olives. So. Oh, you can't go wrong with spinach, right? No, you can't go wrong with spinach. It's spinach pasta. Oh, it's spinach pasta? But it's spinach. Even if it has carbs, it's probably good carbs, right? I'm thinking we should do like a chicken fettuccine type deal, but not regular noodles. With the vegetable noodles. Right. And even do you a side of, say, Catalini beans. Beans are good for your heart. I think if you're counting calories, the carbs are probably the easier. Well, there's more carbs and more stuff, but I think it's an easier diet to start out on. Because it's like just strict enough that I think it's easier. I need a really strict list or I'll give myself certain liberties and then I won't lose. So I'm thinking about trying to go back to like keto carnivore or something for my last little bit, like 49 I have to lose. The more you eat, the more you fart. And the more you fart, the better you feel. You so eat pizza with every meal. Oh Lord, I didn't know that, that part. I didn't know that part. I need a side that tastes good. Well girl, here's your taters. You know you love your taters. I'm gonna make me some potato salad. With mayonnaise and eggs and mustard. Mustard's good for you. I'm definitely worried about the nutritionist looking through our cart because it feels like going through the checkout and having them look at all the bad we have. Hi. There's so many times that I'm... Isn't it kind of crazy how you can convince yourself certain things are good for you, but they're just absolute trash? Like, learning to eat differently 
is so hard to teach yourself when you're stuck in your ways. I'm checking out and I've got my pastries and I got my candy bar and I got my chips and the lady's just looking at you like, do you really need this? And here's the thing, I'll say I'm gonna take them home for the kids. That's a damn lie. <laughs> well, we, all we all know, know the truth. I've How was that. it? So we came up with this. This okay. is supposed to be spinach pasta. So this is fettuccine with spinach, right, mixed oh, in. Oh, it's so. not just spinach, it's the... Correct. That's okay, but I always look at the ingredients, and you'll see here it says dehydrated powdered spinach, 1.9%. Holy yeah. crap, that's only got 1.9? <laughs> it's, uh, yes. You know what's funny? I had no clue that the ingredients list was listed in, like, the most percentage first. I had no clue. I, like, just learned that, like, a few months ago. Exactly. So this was not the best choice, right? All right, what about tortillas? When you get the spinach or the tomato. It is mostly a color change more than any kind of nutritional change. Oh, wow. Just because it's got a picture of a vegetable on the cover does not mean it's like that. They know that people want to eat healthy, so they give you the illusion that you're eating healthy. In the meantime, you're packing on the pounds and not realizing it. So out of this basket, what is something that you felt really confident buying that was for sure a healthy choice? Olives. 30 calories for two olives. It's a little bit high, but the issue is gonna be the blue cheese, right? Okay, well, no, I'm so a regular olive might be a better. I never had to worry about that. I won't touch a damn olive. Better alternative. A better alternative. I like them in my salad. Could you put them in your tater salad? Well, <laughs> so salad? potato salad would get you a lot of carbs, a lot of calories, right? So actually, have you explored cauliflower as an alternative potential? No, I have not, but you know what? Hello, Thanksgiving. That's right, right, exactly. I am not afraid of a vegetable. So throw me vegetable? some cauliflower. I mean, I guess it really just how you cook it. How do you feel about maybe using like a Greek yogurt as a substitute? Does it have the same kind of flavor profile as mayonnaise? I'd rather starve than try that, but I gotta learn to teach myself to like that. Cause if I tried to eat like an olive or a tomato, I really am gonna gag like a freshman at a frat house. Boy, it's not gonna be good. I don't know about the whole Greek yogurt. That is oh, iffy to me. Yogurt. Instead of mayonnaise. Oh. I'm a texture How queen. about we go inside together? Do I say I'm excited about tasting it? N no, because I've never in my life heard of those ingredients mixed together. I can't. I can't. Ugh. So <laughs> how many carbs a day I can have? Carbs a day post bariatric surgery is 50 to 80. I'm better. just starting to diet, so I need to have lower, right? No, about the same, <clears throat> honestly. You can practice the same, that way you're ready for life after. Okay, how about cow? I mean, your protein and your hydration is probably the hardest part, because you're, if you can't get enough hydration after surgery, you're dizzy all the time. It sucks. But also, like, the protein's even hard to get down, because your stomach's really freaking small, man. Calories, 12 to 1500. I really don't know how I'm going to be able to stick to this diet. It definitely is not easy. <sighs> yeah, you're going to miss the bread. Yeah, yeah. Bread's good. I can't eat 90% of that. You know I'm trying to stick to my diet. You I know I want I'm... you to be happy. Anytime I've tried to start a diet, my sister always has to bring in her bull fattening foods. You suck, lady. Really? You bring all that donuts in when you're, like, sister... Both your parents died at 51, and here you are, the Chris... Oh, my God. I don't like her. Why is she trying to sabotage her own sister? You'd think she'd want her to succeed. Stop. You're killing me. She's helping, for sure. I cannot wait to the day that I don't have to have a potty chair. After seeing Dr. Proctor and the nutritionist, I'm wanting to push myself. I want to get on the right track. I want to do this damn thing for myself, but not only that. She can walk. Why is she dumping in the bedroom? Also, she has the smallest butt I've ever seen for a 440 pounder. I was jealous that I wasn't caked up, but she's definitely struggling too. So that Jacob can see me because I do not want him going down the same path I went down. Hey guys, what y'all doing? I got your breakfast. Want to go get me uh, some plates out of the kitchen, please? I would love for there to be a day that I could wake up 
not piss myself, just wake up and go to the bathroom normally, not have to powder myself. If I Holy shit, the Pablo Escobar of coochie sweat. Look at that. How much powder do you need? You're swimming in it. Also, the Dunkin' Demon in the friggin' living room with all these donuts. That's just crazy. She's sitting here peeing in her bedroom, powdering herself down. You're bringing her donuts? Don't powder up in the morning. Then I end up with fungus, rashes, and nasty things happen. Won't your coochie <sighs> dry out with that much powder? Yeah, yeah! Warner! Where y'all at? We're in here, Vanessa. You oh my God, that looks amazing. But yeah. I mean, I can't eat 90% of that. Yes, she yeah. can. Oh, she can. You know I'm trying to stick to my diet. You know I want you to be happy. I'll be happy when I'm healthy. Anytime I've tried to start a diet, eat healthy, any of that, my sister always has to bring in her fattening foods. And this has been going on throughout my whole life. And I feel like if I don't put my foot down and do something right now to change it, it's gonna continue to go on and I will fail. You gotta be realistic about it, Vanessa. Are I'm also confident that I can eat air and weigh more than this lady. Like, that's one of my legs, she's so skinny. But if you know your sister's struggling, why would you wanna hurt her that way? She's trying and it's hard to even make that effort, but I wouldn't say nobody was putting sweets in my face, but they weren't like bringing them here like, hey, have your choice. Like they were around, but they weren't in my face all the time like that kind of. Are you not know, ever going to eat donuts again? Maybe nope. in a few years when I get the weight down and I get myself where I'm supposed to be, I'll revisit I just donut. Feel like a person that's on a diet needs to still eat things that they like. You you can't just say, I love to eat donuts. I'm not ever gonna eat donuts anymore. I love my sister. I want to support her. I could have brought back some salads. Um, you know, I don't know who's gonna eat them, but she- Uh, probably her. She's trying to lose weight, so she doesn't have to keep powdering her own donut. She can just make a choice and go about her day. Like, her quality of life has to suck. Because I know how she feels being that big, but the powder and putting it on, and because those rashes really suck, man. They hurt, they stink, they smell. So I know exactly what she's talking about. They're gross. Wouldn't have been happy with that. She would have fussed at me about that, too. If she would just eat the damn donuts, she would be okay. She wouldn't be so grouchy all the time. That's what it is. She's hungry. Her it's like sugar. a drug addict getting off their drug, but yet you're going to keep bringing it in the house? They're going to want to do it. She looks like she might know a thing or two about that. They're going to want to touch it. I'm going to want to eat it. I'm going to want to see it. I want to over and over so bad. I you know. can't. I'm an addict. And an addict can't have little treat here, little treat there. It has to be cold turkey. Jackie is skinny. She can eat biscuits. She can eat fried food. She can eat chocolate. She can eat anything. She don't gain any weight. I eat it. I look at it, and I'm gaining the weight. Okay, so the next time she brings you, brings you donuts or whatever, you tell her what she can eat and tell her to piss off. Just don't even entertain it because she's probably enjoying watching you suffer and try and fail. Weirdo. Right now, I'm asking you, stop bringing fat and foods in the house. Stop bringing anything unhealthy in the house. Stop. You're killing me. You're killing me. She's not helping. You're chewing. What you got going on? Cutting an apple for Aiden. What are you doing? Make me a snack. OK. Oh, we still have some of that. Some of what? Nothing. Leave me alone. You have the kids' potato salad? I, I, it's not common. It's not what? We still have some of that? That's half a damn container. Like, you guys know how much you made. That's a lot of damn potato salad. That's about 50 pounds right there. Not common. I don't commonly- They have a picture of the doctor on the fridge. Ooh, they're wishing they could get Proctor pickled, all right. Is that a big spoon? No, it is not a big spoon, Mama. Proctor's the big spoon. Seriously. Vanessa will get it. Vanessa see. will get it? Really? <laughs> After seeing Dr. Proctor's nutritionist, she's advised us 
to eat lots of protein, lots of water, and little carbs. But trying to stick to that. Is that another picture of the doctor? These ladies are horned up from hell, man. They're trying to jump this surgeon's bone, find out what he's working with that scalpel. Religiously, it's so freaking hard. So I'm calling Vanessa up, hoping to seek some advice. Dr. Dangle hey girl, here. Hey. hey, girl, what the f you been up to? I know I always tell you to call me, so I'm calling you because I'm really out there. <laughs> oh, no. What are you doing? I'm having a little bit of a... Holy Man. shit, oh, what is she that? ate the whole container. It's almost gone. Also, I think that's not makeup now. I think that powder just splashed up and got on her face because that's kind of what it looks like. All right. Is that potatoes or cauliflower? It's oh. potato salad. <laughs> Megan. My I just don't think living on salad is sustainable, nor do I think living on just meat for the rest of my life is sustainable either. Unless it's proctor, It's right? really difficult to maintain yourself just on salads and meat because I'm a picky fat girl. I'm definitely not a carnivore, and I'm not a rabbit. If we don't make a major change, then we're not going to get any progress. Here's what I've been doing. <laughs> I told you, she's not a rabbit, but she's trying to play with Thumper over there, all right. Every fridge in the house. Oh, my Lord. And you still choose the potato salad while you're looking at that man? Maybe a little. <laughs> I cannot believe that yo ass has Dr. Proctor on the refrigerator, on the cabinet, in the bathroom, on the Wait toilet. Wait a minute, he does not watch me shower. Let's get it straight, he's, uh, he's- In the bathroom? I got caught in the bathroom by my mom once when I was a kid, but she knows why I asked for a portable DVD player that Christmas, all right? Only on three things in the house so far. Her dildo, her refrigerator, and her cabinet. Don't call me out. You know what I think we do? We actually listen to the doctors. Dr. Proctor has told us over and over, we need to see a therapist. I don't know that I'd want to go by myself. Well, Tina could go with you. Or you could go with me. <laughs> what the? Why would I go? Well, let me think. I'm perfect. I don't need any help. Yeah, okay. Me neither. That's why I got a bowl of potato salad right here. I actually kind of like these ladies' energy. They're probably pretty fun to be around. But they they gotta just flip that mindset. I, w I wish all of them would succeed though. They're fun. I do not like therapists. You already know I don't trust therapists. I've opened up to them and they take what I open up about and use it against me. I feel like sometimes a therapist act like they know what they're talking about, but they've never lived a day in my shoes. So how could they? How can you trust? Oh, you need me. I'm a fifth grade peer mediator and I was dusting you in the weight department. Hit me up. I'll help you. Somebody that's never had to walk through what you walked through. If you think that it would be helpful, you want me to go with you? But that don't mean I don't even want to, you know, probably not even talk to her or nothing, but I'll go there to sit and support you. It would mean a lot to me. And I think that just maybe if you go there, and you hear what she has to say, maybe it'll click. Maybe it'll make you feel a little more comfortable about opening up. I know I've got some crazy stuff and some bad stuff that I've done in my past, but I'd be damned if I'm gonna allow anybody to force me to talk about it, pressure me into talking about it. So if the therapist tries to do that, then we are gonna have a problem. I mean, if you wanted to share, I don't think any but therapist is gonna force you to share, right? I'm more of a open book. I tell people way too much, right? But when it comes to the therapy stuff, I I don't know. I don't like it. It's just not for me. It's beneficial to a lot of other people, but I deal pretty well with my own mental struggles in my own head. But once in a while, I'll get in my own head and kind of zone out for a day or two. So let's say we've got a big full-length mirror here and you're looking in there. I see disgust. You're seeing disgust. No. Aww. I thought you were seeing Proctor's pickle in the mirror in the bathroom. Hello, ladies. Hi. Welcome. Hey, I'm 
Megan. Nice Hi, to meet Megan. you. Hi, Megan. I'm Dr. Connie. It's nice to meet you. Come on in. Thank Have you. a seat on the couch. Hello, I'm Vanessa. How you doing? Hi, Vanessa. So good to meet you. Good I'm to Connie. Meet you too. Come in. Actually, those stripes do pretty well on Vanessa. Usually, stripes don't work on bigger people, but it kind of fits her better than yellow. Yellow is like a no-go for biggins. Like, it just don't work. Vanessa and I have both totally been struggling to maintain our diet. So, Dr. Proctor told us that he thinks therapy might be the next step for us. I'm a little reluctant. I don't really trust therapy, but I agreed to see what it's all about. But as far as like opening up at this point, I doubt it. I am so glad you're both here today. Me too. Vanessa? I made it. <coughs> okay, so Megan. <clears throat> Can you fill me in? How has your weight loss gone since the surgery? I first I was doing extremely good. Um, because it hurts to eat at first. You break into a full sweat when you eat at first. It sucks for the first few months. After that, you can eat a little more. It'll stretch little by little. But if you just stop the second you start to feel full, you won't stretch it out as much. At least that's how I did it. But if she only lost 150 and then just stopped... At her size, that's not a good look. The last six months have been really slow. So can you take me back? I'd like to get some history, especially about your relationship with food. I've been big since I was basically junior high. Um, OK. But Before I don't think that, my maybe. problem really started until I got married when I was 19. And I was abused, not physically, but mentally by him and his entire family. They would do horrible things to me and harass me. They were really good at, at making me feel like it's all my fault. It's all in my head. Isn't that what gaslighting is? When you make someone else think they're crazy for seeing something and like try to tell them it's not there? Just drive them nuts? And I think that's a lot of guys' main move, like make you think you're nuts when we're doing bad. And it's kind of sick. I hate when guys do that. Or Ed, women. It's really sad to think about. I mean, did you have the coping skills of talking to someone or was food kind of how you comforted yourself? I think that's how I comforted myself. But at what cost? I would go out to eat. Thank you and sit in a parking lot by myself just so that I didn't have to be around the, that environment. During my nine-year marriage, I chose to probably eat my problems away because I was ashamed of what was happening to me. I probably gained almost 300 pounds. Damn, but also you gotta learn to love yourself a little more. Like, you can't just sit there and beat yourself up because you had a bad marriage. Do you think you're supposed to suffer the rest of your life because one thing went bad in your life? Shit, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. I'm looking forward, I'm moving forward. I ain't looking back at that for nothing. If you keep looking behind you, you'll miss what's right in front of you. And there's a lot of good stuff coming your way if you just keep working. As her friend, I noticed that she was gaining. I was gaining. A change in her, not only gaining weight, but that instead of her finding comfort in her parents and her family, she found comfort in food, but to me it didn't seem so because my comfort was already ah, into food. Great observation. So, so I'm just having this image in my head of you and food. If you could have a talk with food mm -hmm. at that time with, in your life, what, what might you say to it? You bastard, you made me fat. I wish I knew how to get out of this. <laughs> Aww. I'm not happy. Where would you be without your friend food? I don't. Skinny? I would be alone. Without you, I would be alone? Yeah. It was the only thing that was bringing me a little bit of happiness. You bring me happiness? And probably you taste really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, sorry. so maybe it gave you some I'm pressure. I'm trying to make light of it. <laughs> well, you'd be alone. You had no other pleasure in your life. Yes. So the relation. I think these girls are probably losing the battle in their head before they've even fought, and that's what I don't like. They're beating themselves up. They did this and that wrong. 
but there's a lot of positives still to come your way. You're not that damn old yet. You still got a lot of life to live if you can turn it around. Chip with food provided for you the things you weren't having in your real life. What would it be like for you if you found comfort in the progress that you've already made? You know, honestly, one of my things that I'm struggling with right now is just still seeing the 500-pound person that I was, even though the scale says differently. I mean, that's real. I looked at myself in the mirror and didn't see any difference for a long time. You kind of just see yourself the same, and then everybody's like, oh, you look different. But you just can't see it yourself because you're so, I don't know, conditioned to see yourself as bigger. But I still haven't grasped that I've lost almost 200 pounds. So let's say we've got a big full-length mirror here, and you're looking in there. Mm-hmm. Talk to her. OK. I'm going to be her voice. You should have done better by now. I don't understand what you're saying. I've lost nearly 200 pounds. I don't understand what? But you should have lost a lot more by now. Uh, we're rounding up 50 here. She didn't lose almost 200. You can't just give somebody an extra 50 pounds credit. I wish, because I'd be at my goal if that's how it worked. I should? Yeah. Why you should, should I? You're, you're failing at this again. You're a failure. Oh, I see it completely differently. I see what a tremendous amount of work I've done. I see living. No. What are you seeing? I see Somebody that needs to get back to work because I got complacent and thought I was good enough at 150 down. So I'm not going to sit here and pat myself on the back when I still have work to do. At least that's how I see myself. Disgust. You're seeing disgust. Um, so negative about herself. What would happen if you saw what I saw? I might love myself. In front of Proctor's picture. What would picture. happen if you loved yourself? I don't know. I bet you don't know. I'm wondering if the stall is related to I'm afraid to let the image of 500 pounds go. So like, it's probably more related to the potato salad. Like I'm sabotaging myself. Right. Wow, that's deep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what she said. I'm having a problem letting my old self go. Not because that's I want to be her, but I feel bad for her. That's who I was for so long. She went through a lot. Well, what would happen if you saw yourself 200 pounds lighter? How willing are you to try to recognize the progress you've already made? I really want you to think about this. And okay, well, look at yourself as making some progress, sure. But don't sit here and say, hey, I've done it, because that's the problem. So many people lose some weight, and then they're just like, oh, I did it. I can go back to eating how I used to. And I think that's where she's at right here, because I don't know how far out of surgery she is. But it slows down by quarters, is what they told me. And being that I'm almost two years out, I'm 23 months out, 306 pounds down, it's like a pound, pound and a half a week at this point. It's slow compared to what it used to be. So you just got to keep working. Keep working. Don't ever just sit there and say, all right, I'm done. That's the problem. I think recognizing that verbally to yourself would go a long way because that's what it's going to continue to take, OK? It was nice to see Dr. Stapleton help Megan, but now it's, I'm scared to death to see like what closets are she going to open and have me look into. And I really don't know what she's going to uncover once we start talking. Ella's proud of this one because she's not a talker. I'm really wanting Vanessa to try this therapy to help her with her eating addiction. But Vanessa has a lot of baggage and she's afraid to open up about those things. 
I mean, people put up their barriers around the stuff that really bothers them. But if that's how she is, I don't see why she has to share. This is um, a difficult thing for you, or you just yeah. have... Oh, I love to talk. I'm a big talker. Um, I have massive trust issues when it comes to certain therapists. Okay. I totally respect that. No, I respect a lot of everything you're saying. I listen to the way you speak to Megan, and I understand that you're not wanting to do harm. So how is your journey going, by the way? Just for my uh, knowledge. It's been a real struggle with... Seeing her accomplishments, um, I feel envious. I feel, well, she can do it, why can't I? And here I am just... <clears throat> you could do it, too. You, you, I, I think the sister sabotaging her has a lot to do with it. But if she wanted it bad enough, she could do it. Of course she could. Anybody can. If I can do it as much as I screw stuff up, anybody can. I was for a long time, too, so... But my struggles at home are a little different than hers. What's going on at home? Uh, it's just hard in living with my sister. Oh, okay. And so you're currently living together. Mm -hmm. okay. We have lived together basically our entire life. Like, it's always been side by side. Are you close? Always. Oh, yes. Extremely close. But she ain't supportive at all of me losing weight. She brings nothing but fat food in the house. Um, she'll bring donuts and ice cream and pizza. That's how she eats? Yeah. But I feel like every time I go forward mentally with wanting to do the right thing, I get pushed back and pushed back by my sister's choices, by... No, those are your choices. You can say no to the stuff, understanding it's going to be a little harder for you, but you can absolutely say, I don't want to live this life anymore. And then your sister, who's if she's really eating that way... I'd like to know what supplement she's on if you feel what I'm saying. Because they say a hit of that's like running five miles. And maybe she's on that diet. The Jenny Crack. Stress arguing between me and her over me trying to make the right decisions. Okay. She tells me I'm a bitch when I try to eat proper. I suggest she get her own place. You can love your sister, but love her from a distance because it's very unhealthy there. I'm just worried she'll never do it. What's the idea of not living together like for you? Uh, scary. Um, I'm scared if I get by myself, she'll be alone. She won't have anybody. I've always put my sister's emotions above my own my entire life, always. Mm -hmm. And she's always done the stuff like the grocery shopping, the cleaning. So like I asked Megan, are you willing to at least consider and imagine that scenario because in order to really follow through with this lifestyle for the long haul exactly it does require putting yourself first in some situations it doesn't mean discarding the people you love yeah that's true but you got to be a little selfish when it comes to this kind of stuff because you're talking about your future and if you kick the bucket she's still going to be there doing her thing right so you got to be selfish. I would pretty much tell your sister the same thing I told everybody around me. I was like, you either roll with me or get rolled over. It's your choice. Could you at least give that some consideration? Uh, I don't know. Because it doesn't sound like if you stay there, she's going to I don't assist think she... you. I don't like the idea of moving out. It is extremely scary, extremely hard, and I'm not sure if I'm ready to turn my world upside down. But you want Dr. Proctor to turn you upside down. Next time on 1,000 Pound Best Friends. Come on, guys, blast! All right, don't go back. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got legs in the air and arms like this, and they're for all up here. You look like a rat! Oh, man, if that sucker snaps, that thing's going through the ceiling. There's a lot of pressure under that. Also, how do her boobs get that much bigger? I'm on my way to Dr. Proctor. In 2014, I had uh, the gastric sleeve. I eventually gained all of that back and then plus some. When we talk about operating into a space that's already been operated on, it's dangerous, frankly. I'm not taking this lightly this time. We are on oh my God, our way. Being bigger, honestly, I ain't been in the woods in years. This is an up here. <laughs> I grew up in the woods, and I used to actually think, like, 
when I'm walking through the woods and they see me in my camo, do the deer look at me and go, holy shit, the woods are moving. Like, that's what I used to think. Battle. My legs are killing me. Glamping it's turned out to be a lot more physical, challenging for all of us than I thought. Hopefully this is not a mistake. What the hell is wrong with you, Vanessa? We're a joke here. I'm sick of you putting me down. You judge me too much. Well, there we go. If you guys like this, I'm definitely checking out the next episode. But Thousand Pound Best Friends, it just seems like a show where they're beating themselves up nonstop instead of lifting themselves up and thinking better of themselves. Like, you could sit there and just pick yourself apart for all the little mistakes or the things you've done wrong in your life. Or you could sit there and make a change and actually try to turn your life around. Like I always say, the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye.